Hello YouTube Frost, welcome back to another complete guide. This time covering our newest 4 star Electro Bow user, our Tengu Queen, Kujo Sara. As usual, we'll be going over talents, constellations, playstyle and kit optimizations, 4 star 5 star weapon options, artifacts, team compositions that she'd fit on, and a showcase. Since she's advertised as a support character, we'll be cutting out the damage tests and I'll instead be providing my personal recommendations on weapons that would help maximize her kit and playstyle. Those that enjoy burst spamming with her, I will include some generic DPS based bows that still maintain solid base attack for her elemental skill. Everything will be timestamped for your convenience, so feel free to skip around for what you need. But before we jump in, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Filmora Go. If you guys have ever wanted to get your hands dirty with editing some high quality videos, I'd suggest you give Filmora Go a try. It's an excellent app on your mobile device that has very solid features to jumpstart effective video creation. Whether you like to create on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, or other social media platforms, Filmora Go provides all the tools necessary to give your videos that extra flair. They provide a huge selection of stickers, transitions, effects, and even a whole library of copyright-free music for you to use right there on the application, no extra mumbo jumbo required. Techniques available on Filmora commonly used by my editors include split, PIP, and a mask feature to bring a little better quality to my videos. Not only that, but Filmora Go constantly updates their application to provide up-to-date, trendy options so you'll always have something to explore. Comment what you think about Filmora Go using the hashtag CreateWithFilmoraGo to have a chance to win a one-year free license. Filmora Go will choose a user from the video comments as a recipient for the giveaway. You can also download Filmora for free using the link in the description box below and get started today. They also have a gaming chair giveaway for those interested on their YouTube channel. Link will also be in the description. Now, let's get back into the video. Okay, here's what my Sara currently looks like. She's level 80, constellation 0, and she has currently 166 talents. We'll be running a well-invested 4-piece Noblesse set, running Energy Recharge, Electro, and Crit Rate. Here's a brief glimpse at my current artifacts. Pause if you need to. And here are general stats. Notice the relatively low total attack stat. When it comes to attack buffers currently in the game, their transfer is only based on their base attack. Now, what is base attack? So, if you go to the attributes page and click details, on the attack line, you'll notice there are two numbers. Base attack is the left number that you see, the 705, and is a combination of the character's default attack, which ranges anywhere between like 90 to 350 around, plus their weapons base attack, which for example, the Elegy has 532. The plus number on the right refers to all external sources of attack. This includes attack percent and flat attack from artifacts, buffs from teammates like Bennett, and artifact set bonuses like Noblesse and Tenacity, food buffs, leyline disorders, and whatever else I may have missed. As an example, here's what her attributes look like with my Bennett buff. This is worth mentioning for the new Feralis joining Genshin to clear up any confusion and also to save some of you from slamming triple attack percent on your artifacts. Because I know there may be some of you out there that are doing this and better late than never to warn you. Alright, let's go over her talents and fuse this with her playstyle, beginning with her elemental skill as that's the crux of her kit. Tengu Storm Call, or the elemental skill. Activation only generates a crow feather cover for 18 seconds indicated by the electro spark on her wrist, which prepares her next charge shot to leave a crow feather. This crow feather triggers ambush, which after a short delay deals electro damage, buffs any allies hit within range, and generates three electro orbs. The attack buff, like we broke down in the previous section, is calculated off her base attack, not total attack. It lasts for 6 seconds on a 10 second cooldown, so 60% uptime, and can be seen with Crow Feather Aura around the character. Also, just for testing, characters with abilities that can snapshot buffs, like Shaolin's Burst for example, are able to make full use of Sara's attack buff even if the effect wears off. This is expected, so don't worry, just wanted to confirm. Here's a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about, with and without Sara's buff. Now, the attack buff scales with talent levels, so definitely prioritize her elemental skill before the others, and it would be her first skill to prioritize level 8. The range of the buff is not too large, and the energy particles are only generated on post-charge shot buff. Even with C2 also providing a buff on activation, which we'll get to, no energy is generated unless charge shot is consumed. Now, this brings to attention her Ascension 1 talent, minus 60% charge shot time, post skill. This reduces her charge shot time to just above one half of a second. Alright, onto Elemental Burst, Subjugation. Activation casts Tengu Jurai Titan Breaker, 
dealing AoE electro damage, and after a short delay, cast four storm clusters in a square pattern. Now, each storm cluster strikes six times and provides the same attack bonus as Ambush from her elemental skill. These attack bonuses don't stack. These storm clusters also strike over a two second period and each apply the attack buff, refreshing the duration if already applied. So with good micro, her burst can provide the attack buff for 8 seconds for our particular character. Now each storm cluster can also damage the same target if large enough, which brings her total burst multiplier to be quite substantial. At level 6, 573% initial strike, 286.8% from each storm cluster if all strikes hit the target. That's basically 6 times 47.8 here. On average though, I would say Storm Cluster hits 25 to 50% of its hits. So her burst total usually would come out to be around on average 700% per burst at level 6. It costs 80 energy on a 20 second cooldown, so upwards of 180 to 200% recharge is what I would recommend for decent burst uptime. Default investment is level 6, level 8 if you want to squeeze out additional damage. Lastly, her Ascension 4 passive restores energy if Ambush hits an opponent. Ambush is only from her post-elemental skill charge shot and it must hit an opponent to gain its energy. Elemental burst storm clusters do not restore energy off this passive. It's 1.2 flat energy per 100 recharge and can be restored this way once every 3 seconds. So 200% recharge Sara would generate 2.4 flat energy off this passive. It's basically nothing. I don't even know why I bothered to explain it, but there you go. But yeah, 200% recharge is less for this passive and more for AD cost burst. Okay, so playstyle wise, there's not much room for flexibility at C0. Your post elemental skill charge shot needs to hit an enemy for the three electro orbs and be in range of allies for the attack buff. Now this is fine for close range characters, but for long range characters, you'll likely have to sacrifice one of these effects. This is definitely made much easier with Constellation 2, which we'll explain coming up. Now those who want to focus on looping her burst, it comes with its own caveats. A 20 second cooldown with an 80 energy cost is quite a heavy requirement and incentivizes a higher 180-20% to recharge build that I reckoned earlier if this is your focus. In general though, at Constellation 0, her attack uptime requires micromanaging between her burst cooldown and her skill cooldown. Okay, let's move to Constellations. In my opinion, her support capability at C0 is clunky. It takes an activation of her skill and a charge shot aimed near her to gain a 400 to 500 attack buff with relatively decent investment at level 80. It takes Constellation 2 before she feels a bit more fluid to play. So let's break these down. Constellation 1. When Tengu Jurai grants attack buff or hits an opponent's, cooldown of her elemental skill is decreased by 1 second. This happens at max once every 3 seconds. So this references both her charge shot and her burst because they are both Tengu Jurai and doesn't specifically require ambush like her passive does. At Constellation 1, I'd expect this to be procced at max twice for a 2 second cooldown decrease by charge shot and then 3 second delay for her burst. Now C2. This improves her clunkiness a lot by adding an additional crow feather on just activation of her skill, no charge shot required. No energy orbs will be generated on the mini crow feather however, the charge shot must be consumed for that to happen. This also means that Constellation 1 now has 3 activation points. On her skill activation, on a crow feather charge shot, and her burst. Maximum effectiveness from both C1 and C2 incentivizes constant swapping between Sara and her party members. If you have Constellation 2, usual rotation would look something like press Sara's skill, swap out to a party member, swap back in Sara, and then charge shot, swap out to a party member, and then swap back in Sara for her burst. Mine is only Constellation 0, so just pretend that me pressing elemental skill left another crow feather. Now, Constellation 3, this is plus 3 levels to her burst, which is just a damage increase. It does not increase the attack she grants because that's tied to her skill. Constellation 4, increases the explosions on her burst to 6 from 4, changing the explosion from a square pattern originally to a hexagonal pattern. This not only increases her potential burst damage output, but also, and more importantly, increases the area that her attack buff takes effect. You'll notice that with her base burst of 4 strikes, the effective area is a little bit limited. Constellation 5, plus 3 levels to her elemental skill. This means an increase to her attack transfer scaling, similar to Bennett's C5 for his burst. Constellation 6, this unlocks our Tengu Queen at max strength, becoming an even stronger buffer for characters that deal electro damage, including herself. A huge caveat here though, the duration of this electro crit damage increase only lasts for the initial 6 seconds of the attack buff, which means that even characters with abilities that snapshot buffs still lose the 60% buff after 6 seconds. This means that even if you buff, for example, Beto's burst with C6 Sara, the first 6 seconds of Beto's burst damage will retain the 60% crit damage buff along with Sara's attack buff. But after the 6 seconds run out, the remaining duration only has Sara's attack buff. Now this is a little unfortunate for these longer skill durations like Fischl's Oz along with Beto's Burst, 
who only have the initial six seconds of their skill windows buffed by this constellation. Other characters like Raiden Shogun and Kuching, who have their damage window within six seconds, benefit greatly. An effective constellation for electro damage oriented team, but unfortunately there's no snapshotting this. Overall, I would say her most valuable constellation is definitely Constellation 2, because this improves her gameplay so significantly and reduces a lot of the clunkiness of C0. Micromanaging and constant swaps are still factors though. After C2, C6 for that immense electro crit damage buff, even if it doesn't snapshot. Okay, let's go over suitable weapon options for her. No numbers this time, so the red just fine can take a breather. Instead, we'll be focusing on two stats that I would recommend trying to balance, base attack and recharge. But first, for those looking to pack a punch with her burst, you'll probably want to stringless it up or five star skyward harp if you have one lying around stringless provides that raw burst damage bonus and five star skyward harp is a great crit stat stick that also has the current highest base attack for bows only thing that harp lacks is recharge four recharge based weapons we have and these are all values at level 80 favonius Lower base attack at 401, higher recharge at 55.9. Highly recommend this one. Loss of about 60 to 90 attack, but massive recharge stat stick to assist with 80 cost burst for good rotations. Passive is also extremely valuable for team utility. Just remember that Sara has to be on the field to generate the elemental particles, then you can swap. Sacrificial. Higher base attack at 497, lower recharge at 27.9. Mediocre in my opinion, only benefit over Favonius is the 60 to 90 attack gain based on elemental skill level. Elegy. This bow was available during Venti's rerun in 1.4 and is a great fit for furthering her buffing potential or retaining that larger recharge. Base attack of 532, recharge of 50.3%, these are at level 80. Additional passive easily activated by her burst, granting additional elemental mastery and attack percent to party members with a 20 second cooldown, also following Sara's burst cooldown. Overall recommendations for highest attack transfer and burst damage, Skyward Heart. If only 4 star are available, I'd definitely recommend Favonius for team utility or Stringless for that burst damage. Now, between most of the weapons, the attack transfer difference varies between 60 to 200, comparing at equal levels, which for most team compositions with average buffing comes out to be a fluctuation of 5 to 8% damage. In general, you'd be trading that 5 to 8% team damage for uptime with higher recharge and burst looping. Now, onto artifact recommendations for Sara. 4 piece sets first. I would recommend 4 piece Noblesse as the highest value artifact set for her, even though the 4 piece Noblesse uptime is only 12 seconds compared to her burst cooldown of 20 seconds. In my opinion, it's still the best option to compound with her natural attack buffing kit. If you plan to run a high damage burst Sara, I would recommend 4 piece Emblem set to provide the most mileage with 20% recharge and additional conversion to burst damage here. 4 piece Thunder Soother is also an option here, but it's strictly inferior to the 4 emblem for Sara burst build. And just for completeness, I would not recommend 4 piece Tenacity or 4 piece Thundering Fury on her, since the actual activation of her elemental skill does no damage. Now, for general 2 piece 2 piece mixtures, we have Emblem for the 20% recharge, Noblesse for 20% burst, Thundering for 15% electro, Gladiator or Shimanawas for 18% attack. For newer players unable to achieve these 2 piece sets, the most important thing is high enough recharge, about 180 to 200%, to loop the burst. Now these two piece sets that I mentioned are stepping stones before a four piece noblesse buffing kit or a burst damage four piece emblem build. Okay, main stat choices. So for support build noblesse Sara, energy recharge, electro damage bonus, and a crit rate mask. Attack time piece is a suitable alternative here if you can maintain above 180% recharge from substats and weapon. For burst build emblem Sara, a standard attack time piece, electro cup, and crit mask or emblem specific energy recharge time beast attack cup and crit mask are both fine. The mask for the burst build can either be crit rate or crit damage depending on your weapon and crit ratio. For those damage per screenshot emblems are gamers, I'd recommend energy recharge time piece, electro cup and crit damage mask and get your attack percent from Bennett and company. Crit damage is fine because I mean, you'll be resetting the run 50 times anyway for that screenshot crit, yeah? That should cover it for artifacts. Okay, moving on to team compositions. Now, I would recommend Constellation 2 Sara to improve the flow of her playstyle before investing her into your team. So in my opinion, Sara's investment allows her to be an alternative attack buffer to Bennett, and the more constellations up to C6 incentivizes her to be mono electro or electro charge composition builder. It's also available to be a superconductor for physical teams like Eula, but requires pretty tight timings to maximize Eula's burst window of 7 seconds plus her wind-up animation time. The problem here is that unless you're confident with your iframe abilities, the team composition may lack healing of sorts. Besides Bennett, we have Diona, Barbara, Noelle, and the Anemo healers Sayu and Jean. Of these choices, the only healer that doesn't synergize with her that well is Noelle. Bennett is an all-in-one, 
Diona doubles as a healer and shielder, Barbara is available for budget electrocharged, and the Anemo can reduce resistance with Viridescent Venerer. With all this in mind, I'd recommend building Star around Raiden, Kaching, or Beido for Electro compositions, Mona, Kingshio, Hartank for Hydro, and Eula is a possibility for Physical, again if you can manage the strict burst window timing. If doubling up on the buffers, say for example you're running both Sara and Bennett in the same team comp, multiple additional compositions show up. So we have the new composition, which is these two plus Mona and your Nuker. We also have Xingqiu plus an Electro DPS here for an Electro main DPS composition. We have Mono Electro with Kazuo buffing and reducing resistance. And finally we have the national team comp plus Sara, Xiaoling, Xingqiu, Bennett, and Sara. That should cover my general recommendations for building around Zara. Okay, let's showcase some compositions. We'll drop by the Primo Geovish app and showcase her rotations. Do the music, Mr. Cope. And with the showcase complete, that about wraps up the core of this guide. Our Tengu Queen has solid buff potential with a bit of clunkiness locked by Constellation 2. If you find yourself with a high Constellation Sara, possibly even Constellation 6, she can provide some of the strongest team buffing potential for Electro units. If this guide helped you understand Sara a little better, consider liking the video and subscribing to the YouTube channel for more similar content. It's free and I'd really appreciate it. I also stream nearly every day at twitch.tv forward slash slice, so if you happen to watch Twitch, consider dropping a follow. Thanks for watching, and I wish that everyone's still trying to pull the Raiden Shogun and Sara the best of luck. See you on the next video. Take care.